Everybody, welcome to Lloyd Tries Cars. This is episode one. Um, we've got the Vauxhall VX 220 as our first car of the channel. Can't thank uh, Jack at Fish Performance enough for inviting me down and uh, throwing me the keys to what is probably the most unique VX 220 I've ever seen. Let's have a little look around it. This is non-turbo, this is a 2.2 litre naturally aspirated car, uh, 16 valve, uh, about 150 odd brake horsepower, but obviously these things weigh nothing. Um, looks incredible in its British racing green. Uh, would it be controversial to say that it's a little bit better looking than an Elise in my opinion? Um, I just think all of the little details on it are just absolutely wonderful. Um, we're going to find out about how it drives, we're going to find out a little bit about what the car uh, is and, and how it performs and how it handles and yeah, come along for the ride and see what you think. So here we are at in the daylight in all its, all, all its glory. We're going to go and take it for a little drive now just to get a few uh, kind of ideas of how it goes, how it steers, how it all feels really. So uh, you'll join me in the passenger seat. No, you won't. You'll join me in the driver's seat. Whatever. So there's not much going on in the interior as you can see. This is a very basic car. It's about as basic as sports cars come. Five-speed gearbox through to the middle of the car. Uh, Mid-engined, obviously, it's for perfect weight distribution. Nothing on the steering wheel other than a horn button, which is just beautiful. We've got a couple of buttons here. No idea what they do. Absolutely no idea. You've got hot, cold, fan, no fan, where you want the air pointed, and you've got radio one on there, or radio four, doesn't matter. Whatever you like. Um, lights just across the front there. There's really not much going on here, to a point where I've tried to show you the engine, I've no idea how to open the boot, front or back, it might not even have a front boot, who knows? Anyway, that's the interior, you can see not a lot going on here. Yeah. Right, so we're just going to hop in and take it for a drive now. So. Okay, right. Welcome everybody to my first drive of the Vauxhall VX220. Okay, get ourselves comfortable. Is there any, immediately I'm drawn to, is there any steering column adjustment? And I don't think there is. So we're gonna go no to that one. Am I sitting comfortably? Somewhat so, I would say. Okay. Right, let's see how we go then, shall we? As you can imagine, no power assisted steering in this. I don't think there is, it doesn't feel like it. Not that you need it. Just have that window up so you can hear us properly. Hopefully it's not too crashy in here and you can hear me properly. It is somewhat of a racing car really, this thing. It's about as close as you'll get to a racing car on the road. You know, the Elise, the Elise VX220, that kind of thing. That's, uh, that's tiny little steering wheel in front of me. These things that I'm just noticing and instantly, my instant feedback. Tiny little steering wheel. Fantastic, uh, fantastic agility through that. It's a bit hot in here, but I don't want to drop the windows in case you can't hear me. I could take the roof off if I wanted to, but um, just don't want to mess the audio quality up. Third is nice. The thing I have noticed you have got to sort of contort your leg over, sort of round the column, and have your foot in a slightly odd position to go from throttle to brake. So we're just going to just have another look and just double check. 
if there is no steering column adjustment, just want to make absolutely sure of that. Okay, I'm not sure there is. I can go back on the seat though, so that, yeah, I think I was probably sat a bit too close. There you go, we're learning things. Right, leg adjusted, let's go. So, into first, got nice metal handbrake, proper handbrake. It is a little toasty in here, but I'm prepared to sacrifice my own mild discomfort for your viewing pleasure. I do feel like a, a, a green, British Racing Green VX220 is quite a cool thing to be seen in. So my immediate impressions of, of image is, I think I look quite cool. I think those that know would probably go, that's a green Vauxhall VX220, that's very cool. Those that don't know would probably go, he has a green Lotus. Just, just waltz up the road. That was third gear at 2000 RPM. She does waltz up the road quite nicely. So while we're just at the lights, ergonomics. So we've got a stereo. Everything is within reaching distance of a car. In most cars, if you reach to the other side of the car, you can't touch the, the passenger door, you can in this. Um, you would struggle to have two medium sized people sat next to each other in this car, but then the whole point of having this car is because it's lightweight, sub one ton. You don't really want to have any friends anyway, do you? Ruin your driving experience. Now, this engine, this is the 2.2 litre naturally aspirated. It doesn't have the turbo. They did a Vauxhall VX220 turbo, which is the one that Clarkson famously uh, adored. He, he thought it was a great car, really, really enjoyed that car. And uh, it was on top, you probably remember it, but uh, yeah, it was kind of the only Vauxhall he ever really liked, that and the Monaro. So I think it did quite well through that. But this is the naturally aspirated 2.2 litre 16 valve, um, quite revvy. I've got a rev line of six and a bit thousand RPM, but it's quite torquey being a 2.2. So uh, the Lotus has always got a 1.8, um, slightly bigger engine in this. So you've got a bit more torque. So it'd be quite interesting to see when I do drive an Elise, how it compares to this. So we're just sat in a bit of traffic at the moment. So we'll get onto some nicer roads and uh, we'll experience a little bit more about what the handling's like. Got some windy down windows. Cool. You see those got hazards. There's really not much in here to talk about, but that's good. I like that. It's pure. Very pure. So I've just been sat in traffic, done a bit of town driving, and the thing is the clutch really light really nice like first and second gear you can pull yourself around junctions in second gear no proper torque there's no mass to this car it's so light it's a mass produced engine so you've got no issues with any overheating or anything silly like that um, it's obviously a, out of Vauxhall so it was a, lots of Vectras had them and Zafiras and so on so it's a well well known well produced engine so that should also mean it should be quite reliable so we're just going to uh, just heading out onto some open roads now we're going to do um, couple of nice corners and we'll see how we uh, see how we th see what we think of the handling but uh, I would imagine it'd be probably quite good okay so here we are on the open road hopefully you can hear me okay
enough brake horsepower, but it just doesn't need much to get it through these corners. Gearbox is nice. Not the most tuneful track in the world, but that can also be that can also be solved with a bit of a aftermarket exhaust or something maybe. Hook the curb, power out of it, into fourth, dab a 
great. test of turning circles not bad not bad to be fair considering it's going to be a wide track car it's not bad so some conclusions things i like things that i've learned things i don't quite like as much I found that this car is a lot more comfortable than you think. It certainly, uh, certainly rides beautifully. Everything you've ever heard about a light, lightweight being the best way forward is absolutely bang on right. Thin tyres, or thin wheels I should say. Good, good amount of tyre profile. It's, per it's the perfect recipe for this country, the UK. With its roads, its undulations, poor road quality, it's perfect for this kind of stuff if you want to have fun. You feel very very connected to the car and that's such a crucial word connected is exactly how you feel there's no power steering there's no interference you can just feel and think your way through the bends it really is handling is phenomenal so i can really see how it how it ranked so highly on the list in terms of overall pure pace that's not what got it on that list i think it's just the connection between the car and the squidgy bit driving it, the human being. Um, I feel very connected to how this car puts itself through a sequence of bends. The brakes are, deserve another shout out as well. The brake feel is fantastic, but then again, lack of mass, lightweight car. It doesn't need massive brakes or a massive expense to get it stopped. It's very, very impressive, I have to say. Those are the two big things that really stand out for me in this car. Things I don't quite gel with quite as much is the engine. I think it serves a really good power plant for this car. If you're not somebody that likes to live at 6,000 RPM plus constantly, then this could actually be the right package for you. It's going to be very economical, um, it's got more than enough power, and we're just chugging along now in fifth gear at 60 miles an hour, 2,500 RPM. This is fine, um, but it is more of a torquey kind of performance. Um, 
it's fine. It's not bad, but for me, it's fine. It doesn't really come in with its camshaft. You can see that it was a very kind of road car derived engine rather than a bit more purposeful racing engine. But then I'd be very interested to see what the turbo is like. Um, so no problem there. Gearbox is good. Like the gearbox, you can you can find your gears quite nicely. Maybe a little bit of slack, but again, it's done 70,000 miles this car and it's 24 years old and I think for its age it drives fantastically well. Um, little quirks, not really criticism, just no, just observations really. I think that the I think that the uh, the heat in here. I mean, it's only about 18 degrees today, and I know I'm wearing a fleece, but it is very hot in here. I've got the heating set to minimum. Naturally, you're always going to have the roof off in this car, so that shouldn't be an issue. So I can't knock it for being hot in here because there's no air conditioning. It's built for lightweight. It's not built for luxury. This car. And if you want a car that's built for luxury, don't buy a Vauxhall VX220, it's quite simple. Um, but the way, I, the way I pictured this car is pretty much how it's delivered. Just the most communicative, communicative steering, no frills, just a lovely, lovely experience to get yourself down a nice country B road really like it and in this colour as well because I can see so many flashes of green around the car it's quite special it is quite special so VX220 thumbs up from me really really like this car really like this car would I own one I don't know never say never I'd probably be more inclined for a turbo but um, but I think this is a very 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 positive package in this car. I think it's uh, it's it's everything that you want. So uh, yeah, big big thank you to Fisher Performance Cars for letting me have a go in this car. Thank you so much to them. They've got a great selection of cars, huge variety. Check them out. They prep their cars very very well, and they pick some very interesting bits and pieces. They do cars, they do bikes, and above all else, they're just bloody nice people. Um, so go and see and go and check them out. This car is available on their website for fourteen and a half thousand pounds, um, seventy nine thousand miles, as I say. Drives really, really well. Drives really, really well. It's not a brand new car. It's not a brand new car. It's twenty four years old, but it drives really, really well considering. So thanks for watching, guys. Really, really appreciate it. Obviously, this is the first video. How, you know, how long it's going to take to complete this list is how long is a piece of string but, um, but there we are we're at car number one the first car thank you very much for watching this guys and um, yeah please tell your friends like, comment, subscribe, all the rest of it and uh, we shall see you for another car very soon thanks for watching